What do you hear? Use your sense of hearing. What is this? That's the hard one. Can you guess what this is? How about this? Use your sense of hearing. Can you guess what this is? Okay, what about this one? Can you use your sense of hearing? Excellent! Our five senses! Welcome to the Rockbridge Regional Library Storytime Live. I am Miss Wendy and with me as always is Miss Carol. <laughs> and if you are using your ears, you would have heard some sounds. First you heard this. A triangle. These are super fun. It's all I can do not to just go <laughs> in it. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can't resist. I can't resist it. Okay, the next sound you heard was... Sandpaper. Rubbing together. And then you also heard... <laughs> a drum. And then finally, I am assuming you guys knew this one. A maraca. Look at that beautiful picture. So we were using our sense of hearing. And if you remember, we have five senses. Our sense of sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. That's how we are aware of what's around us. That's how we become aware. So that's what story time is about today. Let's get started. Let's sing our Hello Friends song. Okay, here we go. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Let's do it again. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Hello out there in Storytime Land. The first thing we're going to do today is warm up. And you know I got to make my feet wake up. Here we go. But I'm going to see if I can think of other things to wake up that involve my senses. So I know we can't wiggle our ears, but we can wiggle our head. So we're going to wiggle, wake up our head. And so here, here's how it goes. Wake up head. <laughs> wake up head. Wake up, whoa, head and wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wake up, head, wake up, head. Wake up and wiggle in the morning and try not to get dizzy and fall over. <laughs> okay, what else can we wake up? Let's wake up our mouths. Okay, I'm gonna back up. Wake up, mouth. <laughs> wake up, mouth. Wake up, mouth and wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> wake up, mouth. Wake up, mouth. Wake up and wiggle in the morning. Okay, so finally, how about our eyes? I'm making it very challenging today. Let's wake up our eyes. Wake up, eyes. Wake up, eyes. Wake up, eyes and wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wake up, eyes. <laughs> wake up. Wake up and wiggle in the morning. Now, it's very strange to wiggle your eyes in the morning. So I think we should think about all five of our senses and do our whole body. So let's wake up body. Wake up body. <laughs> wake up body. Wake up body and wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wake up body. Wake up body. Wake up and wiggle in the morning. Ah, oh, all right. So 
I feel sort of ready now, slightly dizzy, but that's okay. And so that leads me to only one thing. Are you ready for a story? Now, Miss Carol, I brought your ukulele because I think it's super helpful <laughs> when you play with me. So do you mind if I put this down? No, I keep forgetting it. Well, I thought, <laughs> let's just keep one in here for you. <laughs> now, I'm not sure if that's quite right, but it okay, might be just fine. <clears throat> So are you guys ready for a story? I definitely am. So let's sing. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for showed me a good breathing one and she called it the elevator so you take a deep breath in that's the elevator going up and then you let it go and that's the elevator coming down so let's do that elevator up and elevator down let's do it again elevator up elevator down yes <laughs> that always makes me feel ready and to just take a quiet moment and read a book. So, five senses. Now this is a cool one. I really like this one because it touches on all the senses and how some of us might be sensitive to some of our senses and not others. And we all kind of pay attention to different things. So this is called Rain by Manya Stojic. Rain. It's written and illustrated by Manya Stojic, which means she also did the pictures. Brought to us from Crown Publishers. It was hot. Everything was hot and dry. The red soil was hot and dry and cracked. A porcupine sniffed around. It's time, she whispered. The rain is coming. I can smell it. I must tell the zebras. So the sense of smell. Lightning flashed. The rain is coming, said the zebras. Porcupine can smell it. We can see it. We must tell the baboons. Thunder boomed. The rain is coming, cried the baboons. Porcupine can smell it. The zebras can see it. We can hear it. We must tell the rhino. A raindrop splashed. The rain is here, said the rhino. Porcupine smelled it. The zebras saw it. The baboons heard it. And I felt it. I must tell the lion. The lion spoke in a deep purr. Yes, the rain is here. I can smell it. I can see it. I can hear it. I can feel it. And he sighed. I can taste it. Have you ever put your tongue... Well, I know we've done it with snowflakes, but have you ever just done it with rain? That's always fun. It rained, and it rained, and it rained. 
It rained until every river gushed and gurgled. It rained until every water hole was full. Then the rain stopped, and everywhere long feathery grasses grew from the soil. Every tree began to sprout fresh green leaves. I can't taste the rain now, purred the lion, but I can enjoy the shade of these big green leaves. I can't feel the rain now, said the rhino, but I can lie in the cool, soft, squelchy mud. We can't hear the rain now, shouted the baboons, but we can eat fresh, juicy fruit from the trees. Taste. We can't see the rain now, said the zebras, but we can have a refreshing drink from the water hole. So they went from one sense to another. Seeing to tasting. I can't smell the rain now, whispered the porcupine, but I know that it will come back again when it's time. The sun shone over the plain. It was hot. Everything was drying out. The red soil was hot and dry. A tiny crack appeared. So it all starts over again. The rain came and then it dried again, but it will come again too. And the animals will use their senses to know when it's coming. So I like that book because it talks about all the different ways we can Think about rain, even, specifically. So, uh, listen, Miss Carol, I have another, like, experiment with you. Mm. Let's see if we can. Now, I, yesterday, we listened to what was happening in the little pouches, right? Mm -hmm. Well, today, here, let me move this. Today, I want oh. to see if you can use your sense of touch to tell me what is in these mystery bags. Ooh, fine. I have to peek because I sort of forget. <laughs> okay, so mystery bag. Let's see if Miss Carol can use her sense of touch and tell me what's in this bag. Let's see if it's cookies. Oh, if it was cookies, it would be empty. Not cookies. Well, you can also use your sense of hearing. What do you think that is? Well, I'm trying to decide between corn and beans. Oh, here's a hint. You don't want to eat these. Oh, really? You don't want to eat these, no. Oh, now, are they bees? They're bees. <laughs> I'm bees. sure that was corn. That's so funny. <laughs> that is funny. Oh, it depends on how I, if I held it that way, then I could feel the flatness of it, and that felt like a <laughs> little divot in a corn. Okay, very good. All right, we got her on one. Let's see if we can get her on the second one. Okay, now this one. Good thing I had that hint. Here is your second bag. Is it cookies? If it was cookies, <laughs> it would be empty. Not cookies. Is it... Will it feel soft? It feels soft? Yeah. Could it be feathers? Let's see. It's feathers! Oh, it's feathers! Definitely oh, soft. colors. Soft feathers. The feathers are great for touching. Okay, she got that one, guys. Now this one, this could be tricky. So let's see if she can get it. Now I'm gonna put this one here, and you're just gonna have to turn your head. And All right. Last one, it's not cookies. It's not cookies. <laughs> I wish it was cookies. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh no, they feel different from one another. Okay. That is interesting. So they don't all feel the same, different sizes. Okay. Some are rough and some are smooth. You're using your sense of feeling. Oh, oh, I can hear it. Nice. That's so it's heavy. Yeah, it, and it is. It's not like the feathers. Feathers, okay. Right. I think it might be some kind of stones or rocks. Let's have a look. 
Oh, yeah. And they felt different because they, they are, are different. Are different. Yeah. Oh, how cool is They're that? kinds of rocks. All right. So, Miss Carol yeah, was using so her sense. This is a bumpy. Yeah, and look at that. This one's super smooth, and this one's kind of medium smooth. Nice. And then yeah. that one's bumpy. You picked three really good ones that were yeah, very different. Yeah, they are really this different. This is a fun game you can play at home with all yeah. kinds of things. You can try to get your little brother or sister to guess what's in the bag or your parent or caregiver. So it's fun to play with your senses. You can also turn off the lights and use your ears. You can close your eyes and take a bite of something. There's all kinds of things we can do. So I have another book. Now this one is... Well, at first I thought it was about sight, the sense of sight. Mm. But after I read it, I realized it's more about the sense of touch. Because if you can't see, you have to use your other senses. So this book is called The Blind Men and the Elephant. And it's retold by Karen Backstein and illustrated by Annie Mitra. And this is a Scholastic book um, from Cartwheel Books. Cartwheel Books through Scholastic. Long ago and far away, there lived six blind men. Although these men could not see, they learned about the world in many ways. They could hear the music of the flute with their ears. They could feel the softness of silk with their fingers. They could smell the scent of food cooking and taste its spicy flavor. Together they took care of their home and they were very happy. Then one day the blind men heard some exciting news. The prince had received a new elephant at his palace. The blind men had heard of elephants, but they had never met one. They did not know what an elephant was like. Let us go to the prince's palace, said one of the blind men. Then we can find out what the elephant is really like. Off they went. It was a long walk to the palace. The blind men grew hot and thirsty, but they did not stop. They could not wait to touch the elephant. Finally, they reached the palace. A guard came to greet them. The blind men told them why they had come. Of course you may touch the elephant, said the guard. I am sure the prince will not mind. The guard led the six men to the animal, which stood quietly in the garden. The first blind man touched the elephant's side. It is strong and wide, he thought. I think an elephant is like a wall. The second blind man touched the elephant's long round trunk. Oh, it is just like a snake, he decided. The third man grabbed the elephant's smooth ivory tusk. Why, an elephant is as sharp as a spear. The fourth man held the elephant's leg. He thought it was as round and firm as a tree. The fifth blind man held the elephant's ear. The ear was very, very big. The elephant flapped it gently. The fifth man laughed. It's just like a fan. The sixth blind man touched the animal's long, thin tail. The elephant is like a rope, he thought. Oh, interesting. By now it was midday. The sun burned hot in the sky. The guard looked, took the six men over to a tall, shady tree. Why don't you rest here, he said. I will bring you some water. While they waited, the six blind men talked about the elephant. No one told me that the elephant is like a wall, said the first man. A wall, said the second man. Oh no, it's like a snake. The third man shook his head. 
An elephant is clearly like a spear. What? said the fourth man. <laughs> An elephant is like a tree. <clears throat> the fifth man started to shout, A wall? A snake? A spear? A tree? You are all wrong. An elephant is like a fan. No, it is like a rope, yelled the sixth blind man. The sound of angry voices filled the garden. It was the sound of six blind men fighting about the elephant. A wall, a snake, a spear, a tree, a fan, a rope. All the noise woke the prince. He had been taking his midday nap. Quiet, he shouted. I'm trying to sleep. We are sorry, said the first blind man, but we cannot agree on what an elephant is like. We each touch the same animal, animal, but to each of us, the animal is completely different. The prince spoke gently. The elephant is a very large animal. Its side is like a wall. Its trunk is like a snake. Its tusks are like spears. Its legs are like trees. Its ears are like fans. And its tail is like a rope. So they're all right. So you are all right. <laughs> I spoiled it. <laughs> so, spoiler. So you are all right. But you are all wrong, too. For each of you only touched one part of the animal. To know what an elephant is really like, you must put all those parts together. The blind men thought about the prince's words. They realized that he was very wise. I will tell you something else about the elephant, said the prince. It is very good to ride on. Now will you ride on it all the way home? Now you will ride on it all the way home. Wow. So huh? they did. And they got to ride him home. So all together they had a pretty clear picture, but and they all agreed that that was the best part of all. That's an awesome adventure. What a good what a good turnout. I'm glad they all <laughs> finally agreed that they're all right and all wrong. <laughs> Okay, so Miss Carol, do you think you'd be willing to attempt the uh, head, shoulders, knees, and toes? Oh, <laughs> it was just so fun yesterday that I thought, why don't we just try to do that again? This but is what I like to say, what's the worst that can happen? Well, oh, now you said it. Okay. Yeah, but we'll find the out. worst is not very bad. It's not very bad. I mean, here we are. What can really happen? Let's run through head, shoulders, knees, and toes first. Now, I'm hoping all of you guys know head, shoulders, knees, and toes. So, here we go. And then we're going to do the five senses version of head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Okay. One, two, three. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Knees and toes. And eyes and ears and mouth and Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Okay, so the way we do the senses one is see, smell, touch, hear, taste, touch, hear, taste. Okay, so you guys ready? Let's just see, hear, touch, wait, <laughs> sorry, that's it. See, smell, smell. Touch, touch, hear, taste. taste. Okay. We're just going to do the best we can. You can also just do this and it's fine. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. See, smell, touch, hear, taste, touch, hear, taste. See, smell, touch, hear, taste, touch, hear, taste. And eyes and ears and mouth and nose. See. <laughs> See. Smell, touch your taste, touch your taste. Yay! All right, good job. Good job. Now that we've got that down, we'll probably never do it again. So, well, maybe we will. Because I think we're getting better. Mm. I mean, we're improving. Mm -hmm. Practice makes perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have one more book. Now, I was reading this book, and I thought, well, no, I don't know. Could this be a five senses book? But then I started telling Rose about it. <laughs> and she said, Mama, bring that book home. Because I want to read that book anyway, like anyway. I wasn't planning on reading it, but then I read it to her. And she said, please, please, please read this book tomorrow. And I said, well, how does it relate to the five senses? 
And so she said, well, sound, of course. Sound. Okay, so this book is about your sense of sound. And this is George. The book is called Bark, George by Jules Pfeiffer. Oh, George is pretty cute. This is a Michael D. Koopa book from HarperCollins Publishers. Bark, George! I think that's George's mama. <laughs> George's mother <laughs> said, if I just give the book a chance. <laughs> You're predicting that part that's of reading. That's true. You're right. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. <laughs> George's mother said, Bark, George! George went, uh-oh. No, George, said George's mother. Cats go meow. Dogs go arf. Now bark, George. George went wah, wah. He quacked. No, George, said George's mother. Ducks go quack, quack. Dogs go arf. Now bark, George. George went oink. He did a pig noise. No, George, said George's mother. Pigs go oink. Dogs go oof. Now bark, George. George went moo. Oh, so close, George. George's mother took George to the vet. I'll soon get to the bottom of this, said the vet. Please bark, George. George went meow. Uh -oh. The vet reached deep down inside of George and pulled out a cat. Mm. Oh! <laughs> Looks a little upset. <laughs> Bark again, George. George went quack, quack. The vet reached deep, deep down inside George and pulled out a duck. Oh. <laughs> this would explain it. Bark again, George. George went wink. The vet reached ah. deep, deep, deep down inside <laughs> of George and pulled out a pig. <laughs> the, the pig is slightly horrified, too. <laughs> Bark again, George. George went moo. The vet put on his longest latex glove. Then he reached deep, 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 deep <laughs> down inside of George. Oh, and pulled out a cow. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Mom's just like having a fall over. Bark again, George. George went. Arf! Yay! He did it. George's mother was so thrilled that she kissed the vet. And the cat, and the duck, and the pig, and the cow. She was very happy. We figured this out. On the way home, she wanted to show George off to everyone on the street. So she said, Bark, George! And George went, Hello! <laughs> so what is that? Oh, no. <laughs> Uh-oh. Turn around and go right back to the vet. <laughs> okay, guys. we. I'm going to blame this one on Rose. <laughs> So, I don't really know what the moral of the story is other than you just stick to dog food. Just stick to dog food. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so, it is Thursday and we will be back again next Wednesday at 1030. I do want to let everybody know um, there are still story time pouches. If you'd like to enjoy one of these with us at story time, just let me know. Um, and I will happily put one of these on hold for you outside, uh, out at the front of the library, with rhythm sticks and a scarf and an sh egg shaker. So, but before we finish, we got to sing our hand washing song. Okay, let's do our tops and bottoms. Tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, in between, in between. Rub them all together, rub them all together, now they're clean. 
squeaky clean again tops and bottoms tops and bottoms in between in between rub them all together rub them all together now they're clean squeaky clean excellent now we're ready clean but until next week i'm just gonna have to say see you later alligator in a while crocodile give a hug ladybug blow a kiss jellyfish see you soon big baboon out the door dinosaur take care polar bear wave goodbye butterfly i'll see you next wednesday friends have a great weekend bye